Game design, just like in painting or in graphic design or in sound design, we typically work with three major elements. So for instance, in painting, we have three major colors, red, green, and blue. In graphic design, we have three major shapes, triangle, uh, rectangle, and circles. In sound design, we have three major waves, so the sinoidal wave, the quadratic wave, and the triangular wave. And in game design, we have three major genres, and each genre will work with one aspect of the gameplay. So we have action, which tries to handle the player's ability to react to the events of the game, so the player's reaction time, the hand-eye coordination of the players. We have strategy, which handles how well can players manage the the game resources so it can be the, the, the character's health, the character's energy, the money, uh, pieces in a table board, in a board game uh, so for instance chess, it can be abstract resources as well so for instance in chess one of the major uh, resources that players have to handle is the competitive advantage so based on how the the play is going they will have to respond well to this play but time is not relevant so for instance most um, strategy games are uh, uh, turn-based fully strategy games are turn-based because time is not relevant and in adventure games we manage we handle the player's ability to review information about the game and unless we're trying to make a text-based adventure game like we had in the beginning of the the games like those text-based choose your adventure uh, games uh, you have to work with a way you have to figure out a way to allow players to interact with the objects of your game because in text-based adventures you can basically just put a menu with some options and players will select them but if you have a graphic world a graphic rich world you have to allow players to interact with the objects that they are seeing right and in this video we are going to see how we can create that. So I created a, a very short experience here. This is the prototype that I want to make for, that I'm making that is done actually, for a course that I'm going to make about adventure games. So if you want to learn about how you can create dialogues, quests and sequence of quests, so a, a quest chain, and interactive objects, so NPCs, objects that you can find around the space or other stuff, and events, so based on players' completion of some quests, they will have an impact in the game world. Subscribe to the mailing list that I will pin, that I will comment below, so you can check the pinned comment. Just subscribe in the mailing list so that when I launch this course, you will be one of the, of the first persons, no, one of the first people to know about it. But in this prototype, uh, if we get close to Mars, you see that it will pop uh, an area, an aura, and the Mars name. And this means, th this communicates to players that they can interact with Mars. So for instance, in contrast, if I go to Earth, nothing happens. But if I go back to Mars, it will show that I can interact with it. And if I press the interaction uh, action, it will display some dialogue. We need your help. Ares are Gryton went berserk. Could you defeat him, please? I will grant you an upgrade to your spaceship. I will say no because this is not what we want to see. So, um, okay, <laughs> rude. <laughs> Never mind, I didn't think you would make it anyway. But let's see how we can uh, enable this interaction. So, for instance, on the headquarter, I can also interact with the headquarter. If I press the interactive interaction action, it will display a menu um, here. So how can we do that? Well, in Godot Engine, we have what we call an Area 2D. So an Area 2D is a physical object that in opposite to a body, so a body handles collisions. A collision prevents overlapping between objects. So when two objects will 
overlap, it will create a collision and Godot will try to find a way that uh, will prevent that these objects will overlap. It will reposition these objects so they don't overlap. On the other hand, an area does the opposite of that. So when we want to, to check out if we want to affair if two objects are overlapping, we use an area 2D. And this is exactly what we want in this case. So I use an area 2D here with a script. So Area 2Ds have two major signals, which is the area entered and the area exited. And I use these signals to create the following. When players get inside this interactive area, it will turn on the unhandled input process. It will start to listen to input processes. And when players uh, get out, when players exit this uh, area, it will turn off the processment of inputs, so the input, unhandled input process, and it will emit signals based on that. So if the players are inside this area, it will emit a signal saying, telling that, not finding that there is an interaction available. And if players exit this area, it will emit a signal telling that there is no not finding other objects, that there are no interactions available anymore. And inside the unhandled input, if players press the interact action, it will emit a signal say, telling that players interact with this object. So the interactive, the interaction action is this one. So the key, the E key, the F key, C key, and the Xbox Y uh, key, oh, Y button. So the Xbox joypad Y button and Nintendo X button, so on and so forth. So, and, and that's basically it. <laughs> that's basically all I have to do. So uh, if you use that, so let, let me show you how I did that in Mars, for instance. I have here the interactive area with a collision shape. This is what the interactive area we use to tell if players are inside the interaction area. And I connected these signals to the animation player so that it will display or hide the interface. So these are the animations that play based on whether the player is inside or exited the interaction area. And if players interacted with this specific area, it will communicate, it will notify this event trigger that players interacted with it, and it will tell it to play a specific event, right? No, it's whatever event is currently here. So I can change that based on some events. So if player completed a quest, they can change that. But this is a topic for another video. But for this video, that's it. If you like this content, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for the channel to the channel if you want to have more tips and tricks about Grot Engine and game development and game design in general. Don't forget to subscribe to the mailing list so you get notified when I launch the Godot, Godot Adventure Essentials course, which is, is going to be my course about how you can make dialogues, quests, events, and interaction, interactive objects in Grot Engine. But for this video, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.